I want to seize the Stepstones by force and burn out this crab feeder. The Valyrian capital was built into a volcano, much like Dragonstone. And the Dragon Lords, the highest of the nobility, lived here. The stonemasons built the structures at the volcanic face, closest to the source of their magic and power. Now we're going to talk about democracy. This was the World's Fair, and it was dubbed the World of Tomorrow. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. And it's chilling because it's happening right now. Now let's go into Google Earth. I promised you guys we would do that today. And these are the fairgrounds for the 1939 World's Fair that was dubbed the World of Tomorrow. And as you can see here, it is aligned to 66 degrees. Now let's fix this up here. We're going to pull out the measurement tool. Anyone can do this in Google Earth. Google Earth is a free program. And it's got these tools. Here's the tool here. And you can simply place the tool on one end and pull it to the other. Line it up. And this is the original footprint of the fairgrounds. And as you can see, the footprint aligns to 66 degrees. On the money. Now what is the importance of 66 degrees? Well, of course, Trump's penthouse is on the 66th floor. And in very pl close proximity to the 1939 World's Fairgrounds is the area of Caron. Here it is right here. And that is literally yards from the, fair the fairgrounds here. And just yards away from that is where Trump grew up, Jamaica Estates, right here. So all of this is in close proximity. Here is the borough of Queens, Queens County, I guess you call it. And there's Trump Jamaica Estates. So you see the alignment here. Now why are we still talking about Trump when he's probably going out of office? Well, because he was the one who made the... Biden will issue the bite. This is what it was all designed to do from the beginning of time or beginning of the country, the founding of this country. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you right now. But here you see the, the close proximity. You've got C-O-R-O-N-A. You've got the world's perisphere and the needle. And we're going to talk about those objects, which were the centerpieces for the fair. And then you've got the Queens and Jamaica states all right here. Now, this is Flushing Meadows. And it is symbolic of something. It's got the phallic imagery. And we're going to go over that in a second here. And it was built right into the World's Fair design. Because that's what this is all about. The envenomation of the serpent. Now, let's keep going with this. Because Trump's father commissioned this billboard. And it was raised up during the world's fair and these two objects this is called the trilon and this is called the perisphere and they were the the centerpieces you can see here in this billboard the home of tomorrow 6,000 people live in Trump homes and this was and look at it's even got the steps on each side, which is the seat of Satan. Let me look that up for you guys. Here it is right ha here. This exists in Germany. And as you can see, it's got the design 
of these steps going up, right? And this is known as the seat of Satan. Let me see. I think it goes by another name as well. Perg the Pergamon. Pergamum. And Obama had the very same steps. So, this is real. There's only one documented place, and that is in the Queen's Chronicle, where you can find this image of the Trump family advertising on this billboard for, through the World's Fair. Now, why is this important? Well, we're going to get into some of the symbolism behind the ball and needle. Now, let's go back to Flushing Meadows and Google Earth. This is it here. And let's do a zoom in of this. You can see exactly what we're looking at as we talk about Flushing Meadows. Now, Flushing Meadows was an ash heap. And it stunk. And there you see the symbolism. And we had the perisphere, or the uh, trilon and perisphere. That's T and P. Which is a lot like toilet paper. Flushing. The toilet. Toilet paper. The stench. Flushing the toilet on humanity. All this verbal symbolism. And here was the clincher, and this is what dis made me decide to do an actual show on this. Is that... This is the trilon here. It is the needle. The perisphere is the ball. Well... Just a few decades after the World's Fair, a brand of hypodermic needle was named Trilon. So now we have confirmation that Trilon meant needle all along. Now, I believe that back then, the hypo needle was erected to promote the coming polio VC of the 1940s, just five years after the fair. Let's take, like, let's take a look at some of the history of this. Here is the wiki article for the Trilon and Perisphere. And you can see here that. Here is the hypo needle, the trilon, here is the ball, and this almost appears to be a serpent wrapping around the egg. See this coming out here and around? Now watch this. This comes full circle to all of the research that we've been doing on this channel. So it's very important to watch every single video. This is the symbol of the serpent. What he wants to do to the woman, to the womb, to the egg. He wants to mingle himself with the seed of men. Just like it says in the book of Daniel. Now let's get back to some of the, more, the details on this. Here's some vintage images of the Trilon and Perisphere. The serpent using the needle to inject the woman. Now, how does this fit into polio? Well, let's look. Here's the trademark for the Trilon needle. As you could see, it started in 1966 is when it was registered. In fact, on 6, almost 6666, uh, it was on 67. Or 7 6, I don't know the format of this date here, but that's creepy because the Trilon and Perisphere World's Fair is aligned to 66 degrees, as we just showed you in Google Earth. This was just a few decades after the World's Fair.
here is the side by side and I put links to all this in the pin comment already so you'll have this information in case you need to show people but this whole needle thing and injecting things into people goes back a very long time and it links directly into the Trump family and where he's from this is why so much money was given to the pharmaceutical companies this is why war speed was commissioned and given almost a trillion dollars this is why Mr. T was helping uh, invest money into the pharma companies in Puerto Rico. There's some kind of long-standing relationship that we all missed. And here we are now. Trilon. You can't make this up. Now let's get into some of the development of the VC. For polio and look at the history of this now just five years before the fair is actually four years a scientist ground up monkey spinal cord and then killed it with formaldehyde is all this starting to sound familiar remember all the planet of the apes stuff that we did remember we looked at the formaldehyde and the ingredients of some of this stuff and what he did is he tested this and tried to cure polio many children he gave it to 3,000 children this was four years before this World's Fair many developed allergic reactions but none of them got antibodies to polio so this failed but then in 1939 look what happened here Albert Sabin used an experiment in which he put vitamin C into the upper respiratory system. And I'm going to be specific here. This is right out of Wikipedia. And I, you know, we, we use Wikipedia too because Wikipedia basically uh, uses Encyclopedia Britannica and what the fact checkers use to prove things so this cannot be debunked so let's keep going with this found that monkeys on a scorbutic diet died of spontaneous acute infections chiefly pneumonia while their mates receiving an adequate diet remained well then he found that with an infection of maximum severity induced by flooding the na nasal portal of entry with large amounts of virus that vitamin C administration fails to exert any demonstrable influence on the course of the disease but with less forceful method of droplet installation the picture of the disease in the control animals becomes so variable that the results cannot be easily interpreted but the available data suggests that vitamin C treatment may be a factor in converting attacks on into an altogether non-paralytic infection. So it takes away the paralysis aspect of polio. In 1979, Salo and Cliver inactivated polio virus type 1 by sodium bisulfate and ascorbic acid in an experiment. The ascorbic acid, I believe, is the vitamin C. So, who won the contest? Obviously, the pharmaceutical companies, not the vitamin C. Now, let's go back into Google Earth. Here are the fairgrounds. And they are still orientated to the same direction. This is it right here. 
I've got some vintage images of this so you can see this side by side. Wanted to be very specific with this show. Here you see it right here. Here you see the freeway here. This is a vintage image of it. Here you see the freeway interchange. Let's make that bigger. And here you see the orientation of the fairgrounds. And let's go back into Google Earth side by side. Here you see the freeway interchange and the fairgrounds. The same thing. Now, let's get back into the history of this because it goes even deeper. Because the perisphere, the ball, was replaced by the unisphere. This is it right here. And down to this day, this unisphere is in Flushing Meadows, the former World Fairgrounds site. Now, the original perisphere, the big ball, was 180 meters in diameter. And the new unisphere is 120 feet in diameter. Now, if feet were meters, the unisphere would be 0.666% of the size of the perisphere. But if we do the straight conversion, this is one-fifth of the size of the perisphere. Again, this is the theme of the two becoming one. Now, the perisphere, I'm sorry, the unisphere, the new one, is tilted, of course, at 23.5 degrees, just like the Earth, what they tell us the Earth is. And reverse math gives us 66.5 degrees is what this is really, quote unquote, tilted at. So, 66.5, there's your number 66 again, which confirms this alignment that we just measured in Google Earth. Now, here is the Unisphere here. Let's see if we can get it in 3D. Here it is. Now, these orbiting rings around here are satellites. They place three of them around the Unisphere. Let's count this fountain here. This is a fountain. I think there's 48 total. The Unisphere, the two becoming one. We all know that what we're what we're really looking at here and i believe what we're looking at is a serpent injecting the venom into the woman the seed of the woman we're going to look at some murals next from the world's fair of 1939 and we're going to decode those murals let's look at uh, this short video from the world's fair let me put my headphones in this is a two minute video that I found talking about the utopia of tomorrow and what they were really looking to do here. There's a star in the wind that's, that's growing and growing. I tell you the wind is blowing the past away for. So they're ready. The winds are blowing. The pulse of the world is beating and beating. The pulse of the world is beating and beating. Now, this is just basically one particular person's um, assembly of different slides and things. So this isn't the official world order theme, but still, actually, this is from the New York Public Library. So this is, this is NWO propaganda. And everywhere men are meeting to say. There's the perisphere, and as you can see, it looks as though the serpent is wrapping around the egg. Where the rising tide come from far and wide, marching side by side on our way. So this is a remake because obviously there was no footage from inside 
the perisphere inside the ball, but in the center of it was created a utopia. So they did this remake of it, recreation, I guess you call it. Here are grass and trees. And at the center, of course, is the, ut is the sun worship, Apollyon. This is Stonehenge, is what you're looking at right here. As well as stone and steel. Stone and steel, stone and steel, Stonehenge. Not a dream city, but a symbol of life. As and now I want you to see this for what it is. 13 separate groups of five. Why 13? Well, five and eight is 13. Those are, again, Trump's numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. There are 13 groups of five surrounding the Stonehenge Utopia City in the center. So what we're really looking at here is the hypodermic needle and the serpent wrapped around the egg, the Orphic egg. Let's keep going with this video here. Is lived by the man of tomorrow. No longer a planless jumble of slum and grime and smoke, but town and country joined for work and play in sunlight and good air. And as you can see, looking at it from this angle, you can almost make out a heart. At the center are government, business and amusement. Well, out beyond our farm, workshop, mine and mill. This is the world they want for us. Complete and total domination and control. Everybody living in the grid in a utopia, no more living in the country. This is why we have to exercise our right to do that now instead of waiting until it's not possible anymore. Dependent on each other. Dependent on each other. As day fades into night, each man seeks home. For here are children, comforts, neighbors, recreation. As man helps man, so nation leans on nation. See the heart here? This is the false love. You can make out the heart right here. Let me see if I can draw it in for you guys. Here you can make out the heart. Be careful. When you see people using the heart all the time. Could be something else they're up to. So there it is right there. Let's keep watching this. United by a thousand roads of commerce, art, and human aspiration. A bare brain and brawn, faith and courage are linked in high endeavor as men march on toward unity. So this was at the center of that ball that you saw when you walked in. This was what was at the center in 1939 at the World's Fair. And peace. Listen. From office, farm, and factory, they come with joyous song. And comes a great rising top. So, very creepy stuff. This was going on all the way back then. Now, here's where things go off the rails. Because this mural was on the communications building at the fair. And this is creepy because I believe that what you're looking at is the book burning and the foreshadowing of the World Wide Web, which would be born out of the telegraph and phone era. So they start here with this very offensive image of Native Americans. And they're using smoke signals here, which was the first form of communication. So out of the sacrifice and all of the blood in the ground, they're bragging about stealing this knowledge and technology, the smoke signals. And you see how the books are all used as the fire is fuel for the fire here you see the books here newspaper and books fuel for the fire books over here 
burning. And I couldn't even believe this when I found this. Then the smoke signals go up. They become electrical signals. And here you see the secret. It is musical notes and frequencies. Musical notes become the signal. It's a song. But it's the devil's song. It's the counterfeit song of communication. He then converts that into electric signals, as you see right here, the lightning bolts. And then, of course, you see electrical wires here. And it encompasses the world. The giants. The giants holding up the world. You see this? The giant man. So, this mural in and of itself was loaded and appears to me to predict the World Wide Web all the way back in 1939. They already knew this. They'll burn the books. And you can see basically what you're looking at is an Ouroboros. You're seeing a progression from the Native Americans spinning around and around to the final result, the World Wide Web. So this is truly a futuristic scene. Here's another mural that appeared at the 1939 World's Fair, confirming what we were talking about. Musical notes. They call it communication of thought. Interesting, right? And there you see the globe, worldwide communications. You guys, they use some of the very same lines and avenues and portals of communication that they did have all the way back to the beginning of time, all the way back to the beginning of the telegraph era, I should say. The, the same lines of communication are used. They're just replaced with new material. Now, here is a map of the World's Fair. And as you can see, here's Flushing Meadows. Let's zoom this in a bit. This is a vintage uh, map from the era. And clearly, what I see here is the Baphomet. This becomes the skull. Let me outline this for you so you can see this. There's more to this as well, we'll get into. But here you have one, two, and the final. So this is the five pointed inverted pentagram right here at the center of the World's Fair. There's also more going on here. And for those of you with eyes to see, you already see what we're looking at. The phallic imagery. Let me draw it out for you. So, here we go. So, this is obvious phallic imagery here. So, let's keep going with this. Because this is huge. Now, remember, these this area is the very place where Trump began his life. And bloodlines going back to the Trump family for several generations. Look at, here is at the top is government. They will rule over this. Now, there's another mural here I want to show you. This is called the Rock Kent Mural. And I believe I also pinned this in the comment section as well. And look at this. Can you see the pyramid in all seeing eye? You've got man and woman intertwined. And of course, this is the apotheosis, right? Government leading at the top. This is in the apotheosis of 
George Washington in the rotunda. Remember, the rotunda of government. And look at this. You've got the all-seeing eye in the palm. This is probably the mark that they want to put in your hand. Right? The right hand. And then it illuminates into the shape of a pyramid going down over the people. They want to rule in a utopia. What's over here on this side? Of course, they've got their portals, right? Look at all the research we did on arches and portals. This is an Arc de Triumph right here. Arc de Trump. Arc de Trump. Here's the images right here. You can't make this up. In the very area where his family is from, there's much more to what he was able to achieve in this presidency than anyone has discovered to this point. Here it is right here. Wow. Wow. Look at this. It's dark. This guy's playing an instrument. Ooh, there's another py a pyramid there. What the heck? Pyramid inside of a circle. You guys are really good at imagery. So maybe you can help us out with what that might mean. What's this down here? Plows. Oh, so this is basically history. The wagons, the plows, all at the very, very bottom. And then raising up to a utopia out of the ashes of the pioneer days. That's what I see here. You've got industry. more arches in the form of these tubes right so this is inner industry electricity see so you've almost got a light and a dark side definitely a light and a dark side these are the maybe the people that don't want to participate we become homeless and using trash fire to stay warm and they're trying to predict us as people that are in the way of progress, right? And then over here, this is industry. And these people are dancing it up and happy. And they're worshipping. They're worshipping the pyramid. Whoa. And then he's got his finger on the electricity. Because this is the mechanism by which they control the people. Look at that. See, there was a lot going on in 1939. They already knew the plan. And this is our future. It's happening right now. Instead of electricity, it's the World Wide Web. And look what they're doing as we started the show. What did we start the show with? Showing you how they're shutting down all free thought. All those who want to stand in the way of progress. They're simply silencing your voice. And hindsight really is 2020. Hindsight really is 2020. This is a news article talking about the World's Fair, except this was way back in 2010. And they were talking about hindsight being 2020. Look at the date on the article, March 11th, 31133. Wow. Whoa. Something told me to type in Trump. This was from 2010, you guys. Why else trumpet? What? Right there. This is gold. This is a 2010 article. The world of tomorrow was overwhelmingly suburban. Why else trumpet the drugstore of tomorrow? With its streamlined soda fountain of the future. 
After a decade of depression, America yearned for the placid and peaceful promise of suburbia. Right there, in your face. They already knew he was going to become president. They already knew the drugstore of tomorrow. And so... The venomous snake fangs inspire. The venomous snake fangs inspire the new microneedle drug delivery system. This micro patch. Here it is right here, inspired by the serpent himself. Now, what are my final thoughts on what all this means? Well, the ball and needle, what is it really when we really think about what the ball and needle is? What is it? Well, there's another ball and needle. You ready for this? There are actually several balls and needles around America. What is the ball and needle? Well, we have another needle, do we not? It is the obelisk, the Washington Monument. This is the Washington Monument. And there is an alignment. 88 degrees. Now we'd covered this before. The 88 degree alignment between the needle and ball. The Washington Monument and the rotunda of the Capitol. The rotunda is a ball, you guys. The rotunda is a ball. And this alignment proves what the needle and ball is. 88 represents the serpent. The serpent is infecting the seed of the woman. And that's what this rotunda and needle really represent. Now the same 88 degrees exists at the Vatican. It also has a ball and needle, just like the World's Fair, all the way across the pond. And guess what this is aligned to? The same 88 degrees. The ball and needle. 88 degrees. What this signifies is in, in a secret pact between the Vatican and the world government and the government of America. Always has been, always will be. And the final meaning behind the needle and ball is the piercing of humanity with the needle, which is happening right now. Now, there's no need for fear if you're saved by the blood of the Lamb. You don't get pierced. Look at this. This is just nuts. 88 degrees. What is 88 degrees? What does 88 mean? 88 is time and space. That's what it is. It's the sun and the moon following the analema, the figure eight in the sky. And I believe that, now this is just a theory, I don't know this to be true, but maybe the way we see the sun and the moon in the sky, the, you know, all these things, is tainted by the enemy who rules this world. Somehow maybe the reflection of how we see it and how it persists in our reality, the, the, the uh, perception of time, let's call it, because we used to be eternal beings under God. But now our perception of time has been altered. And maybe that's what the 88 is. The altering of the perception of time. And that's why it appears that the moon and sun follow the figure 8 in the sky. Let me show you the analema just to round out this show. So I want this to be a complete body of work here. Because this is very, very important. 
Anna Lima, Sun and Moon. So you understand what the number 88 means. It's time and space. Here is the Anna Lima. I'm looking for the side by side because they have it where you, they show you the sun and the moon following the same path. It's an alteration in our perception of time. Here it is. Here's the, here's the image. There's a lunar analema and a solar analema. See that? Lunar and solar, and they both follow the figure eight. So together, they make the number 88. And this is why they like to use the number 88 when they talk about time travel. Let's close this up. This is why they like to use the number 88 when they talk about time travel. Because it's time and space, sun and moon. Our time clock measured by the rising and setting sun and the moon phases. Calendars. This is all about calendars. So now you see very clearly that the World Fair of 1939 came full circle and is happening right now. Born out of the polio VC. And now we here we are with the CV VC. To me, the, the connection is undeniable. Good morning, everybody. Enter the stars. Welcome to the show this morning. So, something strange happened yesterday. And almost exactly an hour before it happened in real life at the inauguration, we uploaded this video. It actually uploaded during just before Biden took the podium, this video uploaded. Many of you missed this video. And as you can see here, it was 20 hours ago. And we talked all about the new dawn. This was an FBI episode that I had decoded the day before. And I uploaded, had it scheduled for premiere. And then an hour after this uploaded, this happened. Afraid the new dawn blooms out of the shade of flame. Now I'm going to slow this down because this is very important. What we're dealing with here with here is the spirit of all of this. This is why God revealed this to us before it happened. Amen. I'm afraid the new dawn blooms as we free it. For there is always light if only we're brave enough to see it. If so there you have it. This new dawn is Biden's presidency. Now, let's look back at what's happened over the last couple months. Because there's something weird happening. How did we get here? And what's going to happen next? These are questions you guys probably have. Well... I put together this trailer. Many of you have seen it already. We're going to break it down. And it's an animation, the RoboCop animation cartoon that came out in the 80s. And also the film Tomorrowland. And what you're going to see next is the rise and fall of the Archer. And what he came to do. And how his actions will definitely affect our future well into the Biden presidency. Who is the archer? The archer is Apollo. He is the archer. And we are right now in Tomorrowland. What is Tomorrowland? Total digital domination. It's almost as though we went through a portal. Now I want you to listen and watch this trailer. I'll be pausing it. Let me make sure we're connected first before we get into this. Thanks everybody for showing up. Appears as though we are. We interrupt our regularly scheduled program for this special bulletin. So the archer comes out of a meat truck. And he's basically a vigilante in this 1988 episode of RoboCop. 
Well, if it isn't the blue night. Sorry, friend. Haven't got time to chat. This is Casey Wong. I'm reporting live from downtown old Detroit where a man calling himself the Archer is passing out free food to the poor and unemployed. So, of course, Casey Wong is reporting and he talks about the vigilante Apollo, actually the Archer, which is Apollo. Right here, you can see it. He is the first Archer. And we know that Trump is Apollo. Let's keep watching. And of course, we had Arch Motorcycles. That was Keanu Reeves. Reeve means portal. Reeving is a coiled wire. It's called reeving. Of course, Keanu Reeves has his Arch Motorcycle, which looks like this Superman, who also was Christopher Reeves. Keanu Reeves, Christopher Reeves. Right? It's the serpent coming out of the chest. Who am I? Casey, I am your memory. I am the memory of this city because up until now, this city has forgotten those I represent. The many memory, forgotten, these are all time travel references. This city because up until now, this city has forgotten those I represent. The many men can't feast till I deliver this meat to them. Not that they know. So he's delivering the meat. No, they're the many men yet, but then you. Now who does Robocop represent? Well, he's the deep state, right? They call him the Blue Knight. That would be like the deep state. So the archer is pretending to fight the deep state. And he s shoots his arrow. It explodes in the chest of the Robocop. Well, Apollo's arrow is what causes disease. Let's pull that up. I've shown you guys this a couple times, but you need to see it again to understand fully what is going on here. So. He's... It says here, he's the bringer of disease and death with his arrows. But he also can prevent the, the disease. And once he prevents it, he requires human sacrifice. Let's keep watching the trailer. So this is what we're going through right now. The archer is Donald Trump. Probably didn't know you were the Blue Knight. The poor, Casey. They are the forgotten people. The homeless, the hungry, the hated. I am a friend to the forgotten. Drop that weapon. Leave it to the law to decide what is just. Now come with me or... No, no. The rule of law, right? Now, here's the crowd, and they are amassing at D.C. Because this is called, uh, here, you'll see it in a second here. It is just. Now come with me, or... No, no. And of course, they're defending him. This is exactly what happened, what we just went through. However, not everyone likes the archer. Here with me today is Walter Maddox, President and Chief Executive Officer of Consolidated Dynamics. So Walter Maddox is the billionaire, but he plays the role of the archer. That's exactly what happened, pretending to be for the people, but really just making a bunch of money off of the pain and division. Watch. Remember Face Off? Again, that's the Janus, the Janus effect. There's a movie called Face Off where they trade faces. Right? You guys see all, how all this fits in, everything we've been talking about? Maddox, President and Chief Executive Officer of Consolidated Dynamics. Walter Maddox! And he so he's the Archer. He is definitely not a member of the Archer fan club. I should say not. The man is deplorable. 
He's a madman. They used the word deplorable, which, of course, the Clintons used, which caused so much division. Because this is coming from both sides. I understand that both sides are working together. The reason why she said that was to alienate the right and to make them scratch their heads and go, wow, that's how the left sees us. We have to vote for Donald Trump. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are best friends. They're just pretending to hate each other because this is how they gain power over us. Hillary was meant to lose. That was the whole purpose of it. Why? Those people worshipped you. They Those people worshipped you. That's the Q crowd. They trusted you. They trusted you. So they all turn against the cops. What happened? Just what just what did we just go through for the last year? Everybody turned against the cops, right? They got a brick, they're ready to bust them up. Au revoir, my lady. Goodbye to you all. Now here's the actual episode. It's the eighth episode of 1988. That's the time travel number from Back to the Future and Biff. Biff is the archer. Look at the date, 119-1988. That's blind 11 backwards. And what happened, 119 is the date before the inauguration. Delta City is DC, where all this happened. I'm off until the next time. When the forgotten are remembered. Remember, remember the 5th of November. He says when the forgotten are remembered. You see how this works? It's all tied in together. We're going to need more men. The archer's got an army in there. The archer's got an army. What are you talking about? His forgotten people are now his soldiers. Those his forgotten people are now his soldiers. Well, what happens when you make our country great again you're remembering are you not you're remembering the forgotten people are going to get hurt the archer must be stopped i know it looks bad but i still don't think you can blame the archer for these people's behavior so she's in denial she's the q crowd in denial right you can't blame him he's just trying he's for the people the archer for these for the people like bane said bane was wearing a mask and you're going to see that on tomorrow's show, the FBI episode that we uh, uncovered just moments before they start mentioning the new dawn. They talk about the guy who is the Trump character. His name is Bane, just like Bane in Batman wearing the mask. Behavior. I don't believe it. He's not a fanatical leader. He's still in denial. Just a man trying to help people. He only wants to help them. Just listen to him cough. Here's your CV hint. This is all the way back in 88. Listen to him cough. <coughs> Little Johnny here has trouble breathing. All because of OCP's air polluting factories. This is terrible. Now do you see the problems the Archer has created? And then we all come to the realization of the problem the Archer has created. And what's the solution? Internet censorship. Right? Has anyone intervened on our behalf against internet censorship? This is a bipartisan effort. Why do I say bipartisan? Because Trump is ineffective at doing anything about it. And he won't. And, of course, Biden won't either. He's all for it. I don't care about the poor, you fools. By tricking them into destroying OCP's holdings, I was crippling OCP. So it'd sell out to me. So he talks about crippling the economy through his lie, which is exactly what happened, so that they would sell out to him. Now, him represents corporate America. And that's why we all got forced to stay home. And that's why all the small businesses got closed. So that the corporate businesses could rise. This is the rise of corporate America. It was a play on the small businesses. And it worked. And Trump was part of it. He said he wanted everyone to open up this, the, the states. 
But really, what did he do to make that happen? Again, another slam dunk national security thing that he could have passed with the swipe of a pen. It's very easy to make the case for national security in instances like border control as well as the economy. If you see your economy sliding, you can make the states open. You can do that because it's national security. If you see the bedrock of America, which is small businesses collapsing, you can order the states to let them do business. He didn't do that for us because Q kept running interference for him. Thereby destroying my biggest rival. But you were already rich. How much is enough? There's never enough. There's never enough. That's how these people think. It was easy to make the dopes think I was their savior. It was easy to make the dopes think I was a savior. Are you awake yet? Greed? All this was because of greed? And of course, the people are still, after they see his mask taken off, they're still telling them to let the archer go. Now listen to Casey Wong's words here. Greed? It seems Walter was playing both sides of the fence. After the arrest of Walter Maddox, it was announced that Toyco, the company that held the licensing of all Archer merchandising, was in fact owned by Walter Maddox and his company. So he was selling merch, of course. That's what Trump was doing. Now we're going to get into the segment about Tomorrowland. Now this is deep. Of course, A113 Productions. The story behind A113. Many of you have asked, what does this mean? And if you're new to the channel, you won't know because I took down all my A113 videos because YouTube was coming after them. But now we're going to speak in code about what one A113 is. So A113 was an Easter egg put in a bunch of children's films. And many of these children's films were about missing and abducted children. Toy Story. We did a whole series of viral Toy Story videos, taking most of them down. And I'll speak in general terms here, but basically in every Toy Story film, there were toys that represented children that were abducted, traded, and trafficked. And if you're honest with yourself about the story plot lines of every one of the Toy Story films, you will come to the realization that that's exactly what they're talking about. Lost Toys are lost children. How sick is that? Now, it goes way deeper than that. We found so much stuff, and I think I have those videos somewhere, but it's not safe to upload them here anymore. But this A113 Easter egg occurs in these films. Now, it goes deeper because A113 is symbolic of adrenochrome. Why? Because the Epinephrine Act was signed into law on A113. Or signed by Obama. I think it was signed into law on October 31st, which is Halloween. What is epinephrine? Well, this is straight from the package insert from the EpiPen. And it says here it turns pink from oxidation to a drink. 
And this is the U.S. Senate passes. They passed the Epinephrine Act on Halloween. Can't make this up. So this is the opening of Tomorrowland, the film. Now, there's something creepy about George Clooney. He likes to star in films with little girls. And in this film, he's in love with a little girl. But they're in different timelines. He's an android. And she stays a little girl. And he grows up into a man from a child, but is still in love with her. There's a new film that he's starred in. Where he finds a little girl in in the Arctic. And they're the last two people on Earth. This is really creepy stuff, you guys. And this is your new dawn right there. This is the dawn. This is what's happening right now. This is the Perisphere and Trilon. The Trilon is a hypodermic needle. It's a hollow needle. There's a real hypodermic needle. A vintage one that is called the brand name is called the Trilon. This is from the 1939 World's Fair in Flushing Meadows where Trump grew up. Where his family had a billboard with the Perisphere and Trilon that appeared at the 1939 World's Fair. through the sound barrier but now this is a 1960 something um what is it called twilight zone episode called 33 it's like op flight 33 and they actually fly over the 1939 world fair they go through a portal we've gone back in time we made it look we're back skip it do you know what that is you see the spiral there? Spirals are portals. And in Men in Black, they talk about this being an alien landing site. All of the work that we've done is fitting together perfectly like a puzzle. It's the New York World's Fair. <laughs> New York World's Fair? But that means we'd be back in 1939. This is from Tomorrowland. Listen very closely. Fair, but that means we'd be back in 1939. Flushing Meadows, Corona Park, World's Fair. Don't forget your valuables and enjoy the future. Yes, of course, it's called C-O-R-O-N-A Park, which is what we all just went through for the past year. The fake CV. There's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. This will be our tomorrow, the utopia of complete and total digital domination over the people. And what ushered it in? The CV. Shining at the end of every day, there's a great big view. Of course, this is Mr. T's replica that he made in front of Trump International at uh, Columbus Circle in New York at the edge of Central Park. He wanted a replica made. This was 58 years after the world's fair 1939 here it, on the left it appears in men in black and you'll see the significance of the number 58 not just the amount of years between trump's replica and the um, world's fair but there's more to it because the number 58 appears in tomorrowland over and over Tomorrow and tomorrow. Now there was a 1964 World's Fair as well. And this is when this replica was made. So Trump's was a replica of a replica. This was called the Unisphere. The one in 1939 was called the Perisphere. Just a dream away. Trump's was just called the Globe. Why do you love the stars so much, Casey? Because... I want to go there. So this is Casey all grown up. And 
she this future Tomorrowland is all about Tesla. And of course, we know that John Trump took Tesla's papers. Trump brought us through the portal. He finally got it done. Total digital domination because he so much, he did such a great and effective job at pretending to oppose the left that it, they were able to usher in complete censorship. He was the scapegoat, the fall guy, and gladly took one for the team so that now people know that even censorship can go up to the highest levels of office, the presidency. French hated this thing when Eiffel first unveiled it at the Paris World's Fair. They thought it was an eyesore. Eiffel didn't care, though. It wasn't meant to be a monument. It was meant to find another world. So there's basically saying that the Eiffel Tower is actually really an antenna. And I believe that it may be. I think that it draws energy from all of us and concentrates it. And these people go up late at night or whatever, and they suck up all of the world's energy. Arriving in one minute. Eiffel, Jules Verne, Tesla, and Mr. Edison. They designed this antenna that we're inside. Wait, what? This is just documentation that John Trump was the one that collected Tesla's papers. The Eiffel Tower is an antenna. Tesla designed the antenna to observe every kind of frequency out there. Subspace, transdimensional, you name it. You smell like swamp. You smell like swamp. This is a joke. They're laughing at us because Flushing Meadows was an ash heap swamp. Subspace, transdimensional, you name it. You smell like swamp. You smell like swamp. My phone got soaked in a lagoon. And they found exactly what they were looking for. And then Edison tried to take credit for it because these two hate each other. Extremely rare collectible pin commemorating the 1964 World's Fair. All right, give me their number. They don't have a number. They don't have a number? They have an address. Now the movie centers around this pin that you see on your screen. And of course, this is the logo that Trump uses. It's a T. T for Trump. So this is the big joke. Yeah, it's Tomorrowland, but it's also T for Trump. I don't know how he did it, but he was able to bring us into this digital age of censorship through his actions. Perfectly rare played. rare collectible pin commemorating the 1964 World's Fair. All right, give me their number. They don't have a number. They don't have a number? They have an address. So the address is, the zip code is 77002. And of course, we know that the number 77 also applies directly to Donald Trump. Why don't you just give me the Edison too? I'm not... Now, we had just decoded the Planet of the Apes about a month ago. And we knew we were on to something. And, you know, every time we get, go down one of these rabbit holes, you know, take a deep breath and go, okay, let's wait and see how this fits in later. And look, that's exactly what's happened. Because here they show her, this is called product placement. This was intentionally put here in this scene because it's all about the Planet of the Apes. And a shooter in the pineal gland with the ray gun. Because this is all about reversal. Apollo's arrow. Remember all the Apollo's arrow work we did in Planet of the Apes. Showing how the ship was Apollo's arrow. And that this was based on a Twilight Zone episode called Apollo's arrow. The whole Planet of the Apes was based off of that.
think the uh, pl- I think the Twilight Zone episode was called "The Arrow from the Sky," and it is known that the whole Planet of the Apes franchise was based off of that original Twilight Zone episode. And then Charlton Heston lands in a giant arrow. And of course, Planet of the Apes is all about muzzling humans. They consistently muzzle them. I'm afraid the world is ending. It is certain. It is unavoidable. So, what is Casey's job? Well, she's found by the android from another timeline, from another world. She's found. The android tries to find her so that Casey can come back and save the world. How is she going to save the world? By destroying the Perisphere. Which represents the lie. The lie of duality. And it is coming. It's not just showing people the end of the world. It's giving them the idea over and over it's and over again until they just accept time it. It's a bomb. When? This is 58 days from now. It's Amplifying like, it, transmitting it, like, like a feedback loop. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy that's coming from right there. But, and we're the ones that lit the fuse. We still have it. So what she's taught, what they're talking about there is pre-programming. Hollywood pre-program. They're actually mocking all of us in this film. The Hollywood pre-programming is the signal. It's the self-fulfilling prophecy. Because they're guiding humanity's behavior through film and television. That's the big white elephant in the room. That What you're watching for entertainment and talk shows and reality TV is actually dictating your mind. It's mind control. And so Casey understands this and she wants to destroy the signal. What are we doing here? We're telling you guys what Hollywood is. It's pre-programming. It's the signal. It's the self-fulfilling prophecy. Well, here's where it gets crazy because George Clooney then sacrifices this girl, the, um, the android girl, into the perisphere into the globe and that's what destroys the signal basically he, the, and the girl's not a real girl remember she's she's the electronic anim, animatronic character so what are we doing here we're telling you that transhumanism is where they're trying to take us so we're trying to destroy that not realist not not technically but symbolically don't allow yourself to be mixed with the animatronics. Don't mix your watery clay with the steel. So this is just crazy. Let's keep you. watching. He drops her into the perisphere, the globe. Watch this. Destroys the signal. And of course, this is a replica of what Trump has, which is a replica of the 1964 Unisphere, which is a replica of the 1939 World's Fair, Perisphere, and Trilon. Fifty-eight days? Fifty-eight days to try and change things, but nothing will work as long as that thing is still on. So, as long as that thing is still on. So, let's put all this together. Because in Men in Black, they say that this site was the site of the aliens coming down in 1939, probably. And I think in Men in Black, they say 1964, but it was probably in 1939. And they're the ones that gave us the signal to control the world. They gave us technology of television to brainwash humanity, to create the self-fulfilling prophecy through entertainment. And this is why you have Twin Pines, Twin Pines Mall, Lone Pine Small from Back to the Future and that this billboard the home of tomorrow appears in Back to the Future 1, 2, and 3 
This is a real billboard you're looking at right here. We just went through a portal. This is why everything feels weird right now. Can this really be happening? Were so many people deceived and tricked? Yes, they were. This is the power of mind control. And if you're watching this program today, you're now beginning to snap out of it. And you'll be running to the arms of Jesus Christ. Because you'll realize that you've been tricked. Mind control by the self-fulfilling signal, self-fulfilling prophecy, the signal. Here's the Tomorrowland, Parisphere, and Trilon. Just so you know, I'm not stretching this or making it up. It's a replica. Shutting it down is impossible. There is no off. I'm telling you what it's doing. are looking for dreamers. Anyone who will feed the right wolf. We've all heard the stories about cattle and other animals being killed after a UFO sighting. And not just killed, but actually mutilated. But I can almost guarantee that you have not heard this story yet. This goes all the way back to 1977 in the middle of Queens, New York. This was the site of the World's Fair. Now there were two World's Fairs. There was one in 1939 and there was one in 1964 at this very same site. Now before we read the historical reports, what makes this story so unique is that Tommy Lee Jones stated in the film Men in Black that Queens was the site of one of the very first UFO encounters in which aliens revealed themselves to the world leaders. Many of them settled in Queens. These were the words of Tommy Lee Jones in the film Men in Black. So let's read about what happened in 1977 in this article titled The Flushing Meadows Park Zoo Animal Mutilations and UFO Mystery. That was so weird. Never had that happen before, you guys. Flushing Meadow Parks again became the home to an international exposition after it was chosen as a location for the 64 New York World's Fair. After the fair closed, the area again was left with a few prominent buildings from the event, including the Unisphere, the Heliport, which became the catering establishment, and the Observation Towers, featured in Men in Black, filmed with Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. The area also became home to Shea Stadium, the USTA Billie Jean King National Tennis Center, a zoo and other facilities used for swimming, aquatic, and boating events. During the 64-65 World's Fair, there were several UFO sightings that made the news. Most were described as lights in the sky and were explained away as aircraft taking off and landing from the LaGuardia Airport. However, it should be noted that people in this area are used to seeing all kinds of aircraft and aircraft lights associated with landings and takes, takeoffs from LaGuardia. They know when they see something different in the sky or not in the day or night sky. The sightings of strange lights above the old fairgrounds continued after the World's Fair ended in 1966. Oh, and in 1966, one of the most startling sightings occurred. Hundreds of motorists driving on the Grand Central Parkway side of the Flushing Meadows Park reported seeing a large luminescent blue-green object, which looked like a glowing dirigible that came into view and then descended into the lake. At about 7.40 in the evening, a press report from those days stated. So, this article goes on, and I'll put this in the pinned comment, to talk about the swamp area. And that this area was called the Valley of Ashes. And upon this Valley of Ashes was built the World's Fair both worlds fair in fact now this swamp aspect to all this is repeated in the film tomorrowland which also 
is set at the World's Fair in a future World's Fair or an alternative dimension World's Fair. And the girl goes into this alternate dimension and when she comes out, her brother tells her she smells like the swamp. Drain the swamp. Now this goes on because there's more to this story. After the 3940 World's Fair ended, many of the structures from the fair were leveled and the area became known as Flushing Meadows C-O-R-O-N-A Park. A few of the buildings that remain included the New York State Pavilion, which was used as the United Nations. This is it right here. Now, in the film Men in Black, there is a kind of like a United Nations-esque type of area where all of the different nations of aliens come together. And they're in this building. And in the backdrop, you see the image of these, this New York Pavilion saucers. So, there is a front United Nations, but there's probably also a demonic United Nations that houses some of these entities. So then it goes on. This article talks about these bizarre mutilations that occurred at a zoo. They also talk about this place being demolished. And the ground being taken away. We'll get into that as well. A number of obser ob observers said that the object appeared to correspond to the descriptions of UFOs reported in Michigan the previous week, which Air Force experts had attributed to swamp gas discharge from lake bottoms in the springtime. There's the swamp aspect to this again. This explanation did not satisfy everybody in Queens. Some thought that maybe the Martians wanted to visit the World's Fair and didn't know it was over. More recently, a number of reports came in about white and green lights in a triangular formation seen moving back and forth over Flushing Meadows Park during the 4th of July 2008. Some of the witnesses said that the light suddenly appeared, disappeared, and reappeared again between 10 p.m. and 3 a.m. on those dates. However, strange lights are not the only bizarre phenomenon associated with UFOs that occurred in the park. In 68, the Flushing Meadows Zoo opened in Flushing Meadows Park on the grounds of the 64-65 World's Fair. Although small in scale, the zoo had a number of exhibits and plenty of animals, including sea lions, black bears, sheep, bison, mountain lions, coyotes, bald eagles, birds, and wolves. Since its opening, the zoo has become associated with several disturbing UFO events. The first may have occurred in 1977. After several nights of UFO sightings above the park, wolves managed to escape from the zoo. On November 30th, 1977, now this wolf aspect to this is important. Because the wolf represents the devil. I've been watching this series called The Stand. It's a reboot of the original Stephen King Stand. It's out right now. And the bad guy, the devil, he often appears as a wolf. And in that series, he goes up against the good side. And they live in Boulder. I think it's Boulder, Colorado. And the bad side lives in Las Vegas, Sin City. And Whoopi Goldberg pl plays this prophetess for the good team. And then there's a bad guy. But he also always confronts her as a wolf. As this all goes back to the Looper cult. Ancient Egypt, Anubis, the dog god. He was one of the original gods of Egypt. Also Wepwowet, which was also a dog god. He actually predates Anubis. In the ancient Egyptian cult of dog worship. Now it says here, official reports said that 12 wolves clawed their way through a chain link fence surrounding their pen and killed several other animals until they were recaptured by Parks Department personnel and police. 
However, a caretaker working there at the time said that while making his rounds, he found several animals missing. Not just the wolves and others dead. The dead animals did not look like they had been killed by predators. They did not look like they had been killed by predators. He also said that none of the animals' pens or enclosures had been unlocked, damaged, or tampered with. There have been a number of odd instances where UFO sightings are associated with sudden appearance or disappearance of animals. Animals found to be missing from zoos turn up elsewhere without explanation. Wild animals not native to the area suddenly appear in the area also without explanation. All this tends to occur during times when UFOs are observed nearby. The caretaker present during the 77 event first contacted me in 89 about another and far more disturbing occurrence at the zoo. He and several others that work there met me near the area of the zoo. It was being rebuilt at the time and they claimed that the reason for that was something so disturbing that I still have trouble grasping the enormity of what happened. Now I'll, I'll put this in the pinned comment after the show so you can read this article for yourself. Now let's read what happened next. After seeing me on a local television news broadcast talking about a major UFO sighting and landing in nearby Casena Park, Several employees of the zoo called my UFO hotline and asked to meet with me. After a phone conversation with one of them, I met them at Flushing Meadows Park. We talked about what happened at the zoo. It began with two nights of UFO sightings in 87. Green and white balls of light that formed into all sorts of shapes hovered directly over the zoo and caused the animals to become greatly disturbed. Due to the budget cuts and because there were police in the park all night long, caretakers and other zoo employees were no longer present at the zoo all night. The last one would leave around 11 and show up around 7.30 a.m. to open up the zoo for the other employees. On the morning after the two nights of UFO sightings in 87, the caretaker and several other employees opened up the zoo and were horrified to find every animal in the zoo dead. Not just dead, but strangely mutilated. The caretaker and other employees told me that all of the animals were still locked or secured in their pens and exhibits with no sign of forced or keyed entry. Although they were unable to photograph any of the animals, they said all of them looked as though they had been surgically autopsied or examined. Despite the deaths and apparent mutilation, little or no blood was present. You guys, this is what we call insanguination. This is what vampires do. They suck the blood out of animals. And people. Needless to say, the zoo was closed without explanation and no trespassing signs were placed near the entrances and on fences surrounding it. Parks Department personnel and pe police were summoned. The zoo was closed within hours and all the dead animal carcasses were removed. At that point, plans were made for the zoo to be leveled. Officially, the deaths were never, never happened and the press showed no interest in the matter if it was even reported to them at all. With plans already in the works to refurbish zoo buildings, it was not that hard to arrange for the entire zoo property to be rebuilt from the ground up with new ground. All of the old buildings and enclosures were destroyed and several inches of dirt were removed from the area of the zoo. Does this sound familiar? What happened at Handy Sook? What happened to the buildings at Blind Eleven? Everything was carted off, including the top levels of dirt. You know, when Abel was killed, the first murder in the Bible, God said he could hear the blood of Abel crying up to heaven. Creepy stuff. During this time, none of the employees that spoke to me were allowed near the place. Most were assigned to other temporary duties in the park. When it officially reopened in 88, the zoo had already undergone a $16 million rebuilding. There's that number 88 again. And why are they pouring all this money into a zoo? All new buildings, exhibits, and animals were now available to the public. Let's keep going. The zoo employees that spoke to me said that the animal deaths and mutilations were eventually explained away as the work of vandals or ritualistic killers in the internal report. Well, this is interesting because my latest videos, they've been putting KEW notifications under the video when we're not even talking about that. 
the letter K-E-W. And in there, they talk about that that movement believed that there is this going on. We know this is going on. However, they point out that vandals would have made all kinds of noise trying to kill the animals. They had to break into most of the pens and exhibits and would have left significant amount of blood and other evidence behind. None of these things were present. No alarms went off. And the park police and other employees working in nearby areas on the night in question heard nothing. This is right out of an X-Files episode, you guys. The only reason that the caretaker employees contacted me with their stories was because they felt that the possibility existed that the same thing could happen again and found the previous explanation for the deaths and mutilations to be ridiculous. In fact, UFOs were seen over the zoo again in 1991. At that time, there were no deaths or mutilations, but the same employees told me that several anim animals were found to be missing from the zoo. They were not specific about which animals were missing, and by that time, they were in fear of losing their jobs. Again, the zoo was closed without explanation. During the unannounced temporary closure, yet another expensive zoo upgrade took place. All this money pouring into the zoo. This was this one not only involved some new exhibit, exhibits and rebuilds, but the installation of sophisticated security devices. A few local papers noticed the enclosure and asked questions, but officials merely said that the funds had suddenly become available for an upgrade and that it needed to be completed before the money ran out. The zoo reopened to the public in 92. This is all before the Men in Black film released in 1995. No further incidents have occurred that I'm aware of, but all of the employees that first contacted me in 1989 have retired. UFO sightings continue over Flushing Meadow Park. It's important to understand that a number of animal disappearances and mutilations associated with UFO sightings have occurred, over many, have occurred for many years throughout the world. So you're probably thinking to yourself, Casey, why does all this matter? Well, the New York Pavilion is now undergoing another surge of money. $24 million project to restore the pavilion. And there it is right there, right out of the Men in Black film. The site of first contact. Let's read. Look at the date. November 11th. November is the ninth month in the Roman calendar. So what this really says is Blind 11, 2019. Now let's keep reading here. Five years After five years of halting progress, NYC Parks officially broke ground last week on a $24 million project to preserve the pavilion in Flushing Meadows. They're in our face, you guys. What's that word mean? Look at this. Now we're going to look at this in Google Earth. But what's weird about this is there is that there is a theater attached to this. It's called Queen's Theater. And it now will become the site of the Mass VC. This is dated January 7th, 2021, just a couple weeks ago. This is where they will have a 24-7 mass VC site. Now, let's go into Google Earth and look at this because this is crazy. There is the crown. Crown of thorns, it looks like to me. There is the New York Pavilion. And there is the Queen's Theater right here. This looks a lot like the the building in I Pet Goat 3 where the phoenix flies over it with the, with the uh, stork, the stork-like phoenix holding the baby in I Pet Goat 3. It's kind of like what this looks like to me. But we covered all this because we found Apollo's arrow. We'll talk about Apollo's arrow next. Forms a trifecta, the world's fair sight with 
all of the beginnings of the Mr. T family. And over here with the first supermarket, it forms Apollo's Arrow. And this is where the T family grew up all the way back to the 1920s before the World's Fair. We covered all that in other videos. So what is it about this place that makes it so special to the elite? I guess we have to wait and see, but I can tell you this. Something is going on with Apollo. Because Apollo is the god who creates disease with his arrows. But then he cures it. And what does he require? He requires sacrifice. Animal sacrifice, in fact. Animal mutilation sacrifice. It says here in the Iliad, Apollo is the healer, but also the bringer of disease and death with his arrows. He sends plague. The god who sends disease can also prevent it. Is this starting to sink in? This is why they deleted the first live stream. But in order to stop it, he requires sacrifice called the Hecatomb. What is the Hecatomb? This is it right here. It is a hundred head of cattle as well as human sacrifice. As few as 12 could make up a Hecatomb. Does that sound like the wolves? The 12 wolves that escaped from the zoo? And look down here. This is what they do to the animals. They are flayed, which means mutilated. Wow. Now this goes even deeper. Because you're probably wondering, well, Casey, what does Apollo have to do with any of this? Was he even at the World's Fair in 1966? He absolutely was. In the form of the Apollo mission. Here's a postcard from the... 65 World's Fair. See that? And look at this. This was called Space Park that appeared at the World's Fair as well. And it was all about Apollo, the Apollo missions. Now, let's go back one because what I didn't show you yet was this. Apollo and his sister Artemis. Uh, that was Mr. T's space program, Artemis. Remember that? Can bring death with their arrows. The conception that diseases and death come from invisible shots. Sent by supernatural beings or magicians is common in Germanic and Norse mythology. In the Greek mythology, Artemis was the leader of the nymphs. The elf shot originally indicated disease or death attributed to elves, but it was also later tested denoting stone arrowheads, which were used by witches to harm people. Healing rituals. You guys starting to see what's happening here. Now, Here's where things go off the rails. Because you're probably asking yourself, okay, Casey, let's follow your line of thinking with this Apollo sun worship. So in order for you to be correct, Apollo would have also had to appear at the 1939 World's Fair. Was he there? Yes, he was. This is the Heliclean. It was a spiral ramp surrounding the original perisphere globe. Here's the heliclean right here. Spiral ramp. It ended at this hollow hypodermic needle called the trilon. And in fact, there is a real hypodermic needle called a trilon. 1966 was when that was invented. And this heliclean 
also was the abode of Apollo himself. Mount Helicon. And look at this. You almost get the drift here. Look at this. This is the Heliclean. This is from the World's Fair. Look at how this swoops up here. It goes from here and it goes around up the side of this mountain. And this was the abode of Apollo. And Dionysus. Done a lot of work on Dionysus. Let's keep going with this because there's more. Because here is the largest sundial in the world. This was at the 1939 World's Fair. And it was called Time and Fates of Man. So we're just following the rabbit trail here. We're following the Apollo breadcrumb trail. Here it is here. The largest sundial in the world. It was 80 feet tall. Let's take a look at this. Here it is right here. Now, who were the fates? Well, here they are right here. Underneath the sundial in 1939, 38-39. And according to legend, Apollo tricked the fates. In other words, he tricked fate. How did he do that? He got them drunk. One myth says that Apollo tricked the fates into letting his friend Admetus live beyond his assigned lifetime. Apollo tricked time. He got the fates drunk and they agreed to accept the death of a substitute in the place of Admetus. Are you seeing where all this is headed? Now, what else, what other sculptures and statues were there? at the 1939 World's Fair that related back to Apollo. Well, this one is very creepy. Remember, Apollo was the inventor of the harp or the lyre. And here they had a harp made out of 12 black men. They were at graduated heights. Twelve stylized black singers in graduated heights that symbolize the strings of the harp. Here they are right here. This could be mockery of the twelve disciples. Remember, Apollo was the god of music. Now there was also a second sundial. Let's look at that. Here it is right here. Time. Giant sundial. A lot of stuff related to time, isn't there? This was called the sunrise and sunset. Remember uh, Aurora? The goddess of the dawn? Pictured in the picture above the mantle of Mr. T himself in his 66th floor penthouse? Look at this. The bringer of the dawn. This is a large sundial, giant sundial. Man arising as dawn touches heaven by woman sinking into Reese with the sun setting, connected with curving lines of time. And remember all the work we did on Planet of the Apes? Well, guess what? There was also ape mockery at the World's Fair. They were called the baboons. Baboon Fountain. Now, to put this in perspective, understand that the Apollo mission in the film Planet of the Apes, there was an arrow. And the arrow that Charlton Heston flew in in Planet of the Apes broke through time, did it not? And there was a disease aspect to that as well. See, the Planet of the Apes franchise. The disease is what caused, it was actually the cure to the disease, is what caused apes to gain the ability to speak, but it also made man turn dumb. And Charlton Heston flew his arrow of Apollo through time to the planet of the apes. 
Remember, 1939 was decades before Planet of the Apes was ever written about, or filmed, or came to market. Something is going on here. Baboon Fountain. Next to the hypodermic needle. In contrast, it says here, many of the sculptured groups of the more serious of a more serious character, the baboon fountain was a deliberate attempt to create a humorous effect. It was located in in the rear of the metals building in the production and distribution zone very creepy now back then not as many people were awake so they got away with this stuff mocking humanity and what they were about to do to us now who else was at this 1939 world's fair well prometheus was there who was prometheus According to legend, Apollo pleaded with his father to let Prometheus go after Prometheus was bound to a rock for stealing fire from heaven. So you see, almost half of these sculptures relate directly back to Apollo. Without saying Apollo, they're saying it. What else was there? There was another sculpture called Speed. Let me show you that. Now, Speed is often associated with Mercury and Hermes, and they relate right back to Apollo as well. Here is Speed, the Speed sculpture. Let's take a look at how this fits in. Mercury in mythology. So, who are Hermes and Mercury? They're both actually the same god. One Greek, one Roman. And here you can see that Apollo gave Mercury a magic wand. Sounds a lot like Hollywood, right? Hollywood is a magic wand. It's the wood that they use to make wands. And look what happened to the magic wand. It eventually turned into a caduceus. The staff with intertwined snakes. This is our symbol for modern medicine. Are you starting to see what's going on here? The creating of disease with an arrow and then curing it. The requirement of sacrifice, trying to be like the Most High, which did away with that through, the, through Jesus' sacrifice. The caduceus, all of this. Now, for those of you that didn't, already come to the conclusion Apollo is the devil himself the god of music remember Satan was a musical demigod I think it's pretty clear at this point so I'm glad we got to redo the show in its entirety and Hopefully the whole show came through. That's the most bizarre thing I've ever seen seen happen before. Where it said I was live, but I wasn't. And they basically took it offline before I even was able, before the show even began. I guess they didn't, they underestimated our desire to get this information out. So at least we were able to get it out. But let's do a fly over here of this whole area again, because this is crazy. There's the crown right there. Almost looks like a crown of thorns. Like a mockery. There's the perisphere, unisphere from 1939 and 1964. Unreal. That goes under 57. Great grab. Whoever asked me to line this up. Let's move this right to there. Right in the middle. 157.66 degrees. Wow. These people are all about alignments. So, there's your 5, 7. Yeah, 157 degrees. Now, oftentimes I'll also do the uh, measurement in the other direction. That'd be 337 in the other direction. Now here's another alignment here. Let's move over here. 
This is actually the main thoroughfare of the former World's Fair. Okay, that's here. So let's get that measurement. I think we had already discovered that this was aligned to 166 degrees or 66 degrees, which falls right in line with the other things we were talking about. Yep, there it is right there. So this one is 66 degrees. Let's get the alignment here. So that's the 66th floor penthouse of Apollo. These are the builders. Now they talk about the builders here in. It's one of the sculptures of the 1939 World's Fair. The builders of the future. Standing in the Court of Roses in the front of the business in the industrial building, the statue was intended to suggest tomorrow's builders, their aspirations and ideas. Look at the builders. Oh, that's in front of the other sundial. There's the builders. One of them's holding a baby. That's kind of creepy. So, these are the builders. And they're on a horse. Builders of tomorrow.